Many of the decisions we make in this House pass over the heads of the general public, sometimes because they only affect a very small group, or other times because they take a long time to have the effects shown. But as the member for Wickham has illustrated very, very starkly, and I don't want to go through it all for the sake of time, the decisions that we are making today are having an immediate impact on people all across the country and are having a detrimental impact on their businesses, their well-being and their health. And I think there's just three observations I want to make here tonight. The first is this, that many of the decisions we have made here and are making and are making today are based on the views of experts. Experts who, unfortunately, we have accepted their views uncritically. Now, of course, I know that it's a human, in human nature when we are faced with situations we don't understand and which are having an imp a bad impact on our lives, we turn to those who we believe have some knowledge and some understanding. In primitive societies, when famines, plagues, diseases struck them, they turned to the medicine men. And the medicine men came with their bag of bones and threw them out in the ground and then made their analysis and then told us what sacrifices had we made to satisfy the gods. I suspect that we're not all that much different in our sophisticated society today. We call them chief medical officers and they bring their computers with their models and they tell us what the problem is and then what the sacrifices have to be. Regardless of what the impact is on society. And, you know, we, we get criticised for, for uh, criticising experts, but you have to look and ask, well, have they shown that they, that they understand it? If you look at some of the predictions we have had, 500,000 deaths by now. At, in the middle of September, we're told by the middle of October, 50,000 new cases. It didn't, neither of the two happened. We bought 90, or ordered 90,000 ventilators because we're told that National Health Service will be overrun. We used less than 4,000 of them. And I could go on. So the first thing we've got to ask is, do we uncritically accept the words of those who say they're expert advisors? The second is this. We've got to look at the whole of the, uh, the impact of the decisions we make. And unfortunately, it seems we've become obsessed with coronavirus and the, health, uh, and the impact on the health service without looking at the impact on the economy and the impact on people's lives. And the third thing we've got to ask our, our, ourselves is this. What are the alternatives? And if we, we look at what, um, the, the evidence, this is a disease which affects not the whole of society, it, it has a, a, a disproportionate impact on a particular part of society, elderly people, and yet we are using instruments which affect everybody. Very few deaths occur with people who are within working age. Many of those who, res who are infected don't go on to have any real detrimental effects, yet we treat everyone the same. And I think that and I don't have time to look at it, but the Great Barrington uh, Declaration indicates a targeted approach, an approach which the government, I believe, should be looking at, rather than this blunt instrument of bashing the economy and bashing the populace in an unmerciful way.